not bad, not bad. How are you? Oh, wow. Yeah, not bad. Uh, have you guys been uh, sort of hitting the road lately at all? or? Uh, pretty much gearing up for this run in Australia. We've uh, we had some had a festival, a few gigs here and there, but nothing really solid as of, yeah, this will be the big, the meatiest thing we've done this year. Okay, cool. Well, it's uh, good to have you back in Australia. It's been a while, I think. I think uh, if I recall correctly, Soundwave Festival might have been the last time you were here. Yep, Soundwave Festival. We actually, Jesse yeah. and I were together. He was in a playing with a band called Sleepwave at the time before he joined He Is Legend. So yeah, we were actually both there at the time. Yeah, cool. Uh, what do you remember from that tour? It was a good time for you guys. Uh, Soundgarden. Yeah, yeah. Sound. <laughs> Soundgarden. <laughs> yeah, uh, that really is my biggest memory is seeing Soundgarden. Probably. I mean, it was it was a that, that w- entire thing was insane just because we were getting to see and play on stages with some of our like the most iconic bands of our youth, you know, like, um, so a surreal moment for sure. And, and also just, I think the, the thing that, that stood out the most when I, when I think back of it is just, you know, a hundred to 300 band dudes in an airport together, just like getting on a plane and taking over, a, a small airline like yeah. was absolutely <laughs> those, absurd those flights felt insane they like, were absurd they were like like just all everyone you could imagine just like everybody you know is hung over and smelly and just like you know you're just rushing to get to where you're going but like in transit with a bunch of rockers it was so wild yeah, because I guess you know touring in Australia, especially with those kind of shows, it's a little different to what you're used to over in the US, right? There's nothing like it. I don't think there's any other. I mean, maybe in other countries, but in the US, no. Like you, the US is huge. You know, it's like a, a really big place, mm. and driving, you know, it takes four days, three and a half days straight to drive east to west. So, yeah, uh, yeah we don't. I've never really seen tours like that. And, you know, like even your big warp tour style tours are still like, you know, you're everybody's in buses and caravan, you know, to, to the next gigs 12 hours away or whatnot. But um, yeah, for a festival like that, you know, I mean, where all the bands are traveling in that way, it was just odd because, you know, it was like the two, the, the two festivals switched cities um, and they did them on e- either time. It was just the whole the whole festival in general was like, it's it seemed like such a crazy undertaking, you know, to like plan all that. It, mm. it gave me anxiety, but yeah, it was really <laughs> cool. it was really cool to see, you know. Yeah, um, and obviously it's quite different to you know running uh, your own headlining shows. Obviously, you know the differences between festivals and, and sort of club shows and stuff is obviously quite contrast to each other. What do you prefer as a as a musician? I prefer the club show aspect of things that I, I, I mean, really like festivals can be fun. And the, I mean, obviously the, the best part about it is you're playing to um sea of people who may not have, you know, have gotten to see you before and maybe wouldn't have ever come out to your club show otherwise. So like, that's the, obviously the benefit and the fun, fun of doing it. But, but yeah, you do feel like you're just like in this crazy machine and you're just like, thrown in and it's like man there's all the you have almost all the same amount or more work to do yeah and it's like a t-ball machine yeah you, mm. you, it's go it's so crazy it's like the the last thing on your mind is like hope i enjoy playing the songs today it's always just like you know you're there early in the morning to get yeah. in line because you have to like coordinate with basically it's just like 30 bands working together on one stage and it's so get your merch across the parking lot and you gotta come back and the moment you get there everything is three hours behind they're like you're you gotta cut your set you gotta do this you gotta do that you're already late by the time you get there like you have 15 minutes to set up your gear to play for 20 minutes and then tear (laughs) your gear off in 15 minutes and get back off in the three o'clock sun yeah 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 Yeah. Yeah, that first, I remember that first show in Adelaide, it was like 114 out, and it's like, it's 20 minutes behind, cut half your set, 
your in your rig isn't working yeah. like <laughs> all right go it's like the last thing on your mind is the music but you get this it's it's fun to like everyone comes together and i don't know you play a festival it's like you're you're seeing like it's like a little reunion of seeing all these people you know with over the years all in one place that's super fun but yeah i totally i much rather i have more fun you know obviously in a club setting where we're all there to do the same thing and you you more get into like the spirit of the band and like what what you're all there yeah it's more intimate for sure i mean there there's there's cool things about a a summer sun festival you know i mean there's 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 cool things to be said about them there's Uh, nothing like it but it's also like it's they're they're absolutely not the same yeah you're like flexing completely different muscles to do those sets first like you know playing in a club yeah i mean that makes sense you know obviously the nature of your music as well kind of lends itself a little bit uh, in my opinion a little bit better to this sort of club setting i mean would you feel that way as well yeah we're a raucous rock and roll band you know so Mm -hmm. I, i think that those you know those dark clubs are are dark smoky clubs you hear glass break it's and the songs you you could like you there's just so many songs you can't play in a festival setting because it's going to be so weird if you like dip down and go into some like vibey you know low-key thing that Mm. might be really cool in a setting where you know it's people it packed in a club but it's like festival sets it has to be like gas 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 just like something that everyone can get on board with no matter because festivals are just like constantly people walking up like halfway through your set three quarters through your set watch like it all has to be like something everyone can get with so your song selection has to be very like this is a festival set you know you can't like actually go on any kind of journey and go anywhere with anybody like uh, you can't do the same kind of things yeah yeah so what can we expect uh, on these run of shows in May then? I think we're going to hit, we're going to try to check all the boxes, you know, we're, we're not going to stick to any one, one thing we're, we're, uh, we're trying to play a little bit of everything. So it'll be, it should be a, a good time for any fan of any, any era of the band. And it's, a, it's important for, you know, somebody it's important for me for somebody who has never seen the band before to get to hear you know songs they've been listening to for a long time because likely a lot of uh people coming to these shows have never seen the band live before just because we we don't get out there very often so i think it's super important to cover our whole catalog as as much as we can obviously we're like promoting a new record but you know i want i want everybody to be so stoked that they came out to the show and you know heard you know bits and pieces from the last 20 years you know yeah uh and that must be a a fairly difficult process especially with a new album coming into the set list you know having to sort of choose and pick a you know what songs you want to play yeah we we i think we've polled some fans you know polled some people online we'll do random things like that what do you want to hear in this set but uh pretty much just in us knowing the you know the bangers and the ones that have gone over well and the ones we like to play we flesh out a pretty good set and then uh tweak it and add some songs new tunes try some things out you know it's harder to pick like new songs that haven't been vetted on the road for years because you don't know what people what translates first off and like what people you know get with we've a few of these new endless hallway songs like we can i can look back and go oh that song really was connecting people with people so that's you know going to stick around but you mm-hmm. the only way to do it is to get out and start playing so you know all these old records like here and there was like oh let's throw a deep cut off like hollywood or suck out the poison in here and like if people are just standing there totally confused it's like well that's probably not yeah, worth we don't need to do it, that again it's <laughs> kind of fun to you know learn some of that <clears throat> stuff again and and go for it but if like people are not into it, it's like okay we know they're gonna go bananas for this song so if we're gonna touch on this album let's let's do something they're they're stoked about but there's even deep cuts that are like less popular songs but ones we've played live and that translate to people who have no clue who he is legend is like they'll connect with a song because it just particularly crushes live so yeah we've had years and years now to see which songs get people moving so 
there's lots of those, but it, it gets it gets difficult with new records because you don't know what people are stoked on. You can look at some Spotify numbers and go, well, they listen to that one a lot, but until you yeah. get out and start playing them, you don't really know. So how do you, you actually... always have a guy come up to you and say, "Why didn't you cover Fancy, man? Why <laughs> didn't y'all play?" So how do you know which songs to play? Do you just rehearse all of them and then sort of figure it out as you go along, or do you kind of know which ones you want to play? I think we knew the ones we were like, oh, that one would be fun, or that one would go over well, or that, you know, so you kind of have a handful of ones that you know are going to be bangers, and then uh, we just try them out, you know, they're road tested. <laughs> so, so some, I mean, some songs off every album disqualify themselves by, this is a seven minute song, so it's like, you know, unless it's like, something very specific it's like well we're not going to play this like deep cut seven minute song where we could play two songs that we yeah. really want to play yeah so we're picking from like 70 or 80 songs yeah. you know it's it's insane to like 93 93 93 um yeah there's there's some songs it's like this is in some crazy guitar tuning all of its own we're not going to stop and switch guitars just for this one song that's like you know it's a part of the album of, of the journey of that album but it's like and maybe and some people would enjoy it but it's like it's i think that it's gonna take it's gonna take more than it gives to the show to like try to pull it off so some songs automatically disqualify themselves of being just like too off the wall if if it is uh or like you know some songs have certain aspects of like this is has a lot of female vocals in it. Yeah. We're not bringing a, a female vocalist out on the tour, so maybe we don't play this song. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we've yeah. done songs like yeah. like uh, "Time to Stay" is like a super slow one we've tried before, and it's like people sometimes people will ask for songs that you have to kind of explain. Like, no, we've tried it before. It doesn't really work. <laughs> you know, like yeah. like you have to understand. Yeah. You you think you want to hear that song, but by the time we you know we've gotten through the like third weird chorus yeah. uh you'd probably or get a little bored but yeah. uh yeah but it's it you know it's it's always funny to hear somebody come up and ask you for like the most obscure thing mm -hmm. and you're like I, I did not even know anyone would ever ask for that song in general so. or sometimes a couple people will say why don't you play this song so we play that song and like nobody's into it. it's like okay that's why <laughs> that's, we, why. that's why we yeah. didn't play it yeah that makes sense. Um, so uh, before you get down to Australia then, uh, do you have any last words for the Aussie fans? Bring it. Bring it on. Bring it out. I mean, yeah, we're, we're, we're coming down and we're going to give it everything we got. So that's all I can ask in return is just like show up and let's, let's fucking rumble, yeah, man. Let's party. Sounds good, man. Looking forward to it. And uh, I'll be catching you at the Perth show. So uh, I think it's which is oh, cool. the last show on the tour and uh yeah looking yeah. forward to it sorry oh, yeah man we're excited man thanks for having us yeah no worries man thanks for your time really appreciate it and uh i guess we'll see you very soon in australia I'll oh yeah cheers